Hi everybody, it's Cheryl from Yikes I'm a Chicken Mom and it's been a while since uh, we visited. There's my beautiful Esther who just started laying this week finally. The little slacker girl. It's near the, uh, this is um, January, let's see, today's the 20th. She was born May 1st and she's just now laying and she we ended up with a blue egg from her. So. I'm just really tickled about that. So everybody's laying now. That's the good news. So anyway, today what I want to talk to you about is um, humidity and heat in the chicken house. I was, you guys, this is my first year keeping chickens. And I don't know what I'm doing. or But I just thought, okay, I am going to not put heat in my chicken house only because... It made sense to me that the girls built, you know, they are built for the cold weather, about all cold, hardy breeds, and that they could get sick if they're in the heat versus in the cold. So I thought, okay, you know, that just makes sense. You know, God made them that way, and they've survived for hundreds of years, thousands of years, you know. So uh, they've got this wonderful chicken house that's better than any chicken used to have back in the Garden of Eden. So... I thought, okay, no heat. I'm just going to, you know, try to do this natural. So, but my girl started um, getting a little bit of frostbite on their combs. So I bought bag balm and put on that. I found, I found that Vaseline it ha can have some water in it, and that can, at certain temperatures, it's got a uh, lower freezing point than bag balm. So I bought bag balm. And I used bag balm on them, and that was really nice. I really, really liked that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I I just didn't know what the humidity was in here, and I was getting nervous because it was so cold, and they were getting frostbite, and I was trying to put this bag balm on them, and boy, it was like minus something <clears throat> at the, in the nights here. And as you guys know, I'm from northern Ohio. So I thought, you know... I'm going to put some heat in there. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to find some heat. So I ended up, let me, sh I don't hope you can see this. It's, it's kind of dark in here. It's later in the day and I apologize. Let me open the door. Maybe that will help get a little, yeah, there we go. I ended up buying an oil filled radiant heater like this. And I got this at Lowe's. No, let me think a minute. Menards. I got this at Menards. No, it was Lowe's. <laughs> Sorry. And um, it's called a... There, maybe you can see it. I don't know how to pronounce that. But it's just... Um, it's on <laughs> it's on 80 degrees, but it hardly puts out any heat. Um, and on the coldest days, I don't think my coop got above 30 in here. But this has been a lifesaver. I really like this. And it wasn't just because of my chicken's comfort, but it was because of this. When I was buying uh, one of these, and you all probably have a thermometer. You can see, man, it looks like it is like balmy here today, but it's not. Um, I bought a thermometer to go in my chicken coop so I could tell what's going on. But I also bought, and I think it's pronounced a hygrometer. And I keep it right here, and there's the hygrometer, and it measures the humidity. And the blue at the top is the best, of course, and then you can see 100 is, of course, 100% humidity. Well, when I first bought this, and I here I thought I was doing so good. You know, I've got ventilation in my coop. Um, I'm opening up the windows and just, you know, you know, I got it. But um, when I put this hygrometer in here, it was all the way up to 100%, and I was totally shocked that it was at 100%. So I thought, oh my gosh, you know, and I thought, let's open, we, we got to get some air moving through here. So we were opening even the door. I mean, there was ventilation then on all four sides, and it wasn't moving. There, and there was snow everywhere outside. So I thought, I'm going to take this hygrometer, and I'm going to put it on my deck. And it was still at 100%. I said, okay, I'm going to take it in the house because my house isn't all that humid. And it, my house was right up in the best. And the only thing that was different was the heat. So that was another reason why I decided to get that oil-filled radiant heater is to get the temperature up in here to help combat the humidity. And you know what? It's worked like a charm. I mean, it's still cold in here. 
I mean, well, today we're, we're having a nice day here today, and the sun's out, so it's um, nice. But um, that has kept, that's the only thing I found that I could do to keep my humidity where it needed to be. So, folks, you know, just re I would say, and I'm new, I don't know what I'm doing, but I did find that just ventilation didn't do it alone because I don't care how much air I would have had moving from through here when it's 100% humidity outside from all the snow or rain, either one. The only thing that's going to drive that out is, is heat. So um, it worked. So just, uh, just food for thought. And I haven't checked. Hey, Esther, you're the only one coming in to see me to this morning or this afternoon. I want to see. Oh, look what we got in the egg box. <laughs> These two are fake eggs. We'll toss those over there, but, but look what I got. I got a, one of my chickens lays one that's kind of like this. It looks pink. And then um, I got a brown one. Let's see if it's got speckles on it. Oh, wait. <laughs> I tossed out one. This, there. That's the two right there. This is the pinker one, and this is the brown one. I don't know who lays this pink one. Oh, whoops. Whoa, I don't want to break them. But that's what we got in the nest box today. And... Um, just a little word on the nest box. You know, I've got this community nest box here. But one of the girls, better look down here. See that hole that they, I don't know if you can tell, that hole way back in that back right corner? They've been laying under there too. But I've got this other one here above the lower one that I'm telling my husband, I think we need to open this up. The um, two of my hens in this big nest box here <laughs> is really filling it up. So I think it's time to open up hatch box number two. For them. Hey, who is up here? You, what do you want, no? What do you want? You want to say hi to everybody again? My little camera hog. It's so pretty. So it's just so exciting. I've got all, every girl lays a different color egg. My little Bula, the Barnavelder there by the bucket. Ow, that hurt, Esther. Um, she has a little speckle to her egg. Um, and some of them I don't know yet or whose or whose because I can't quite catch them in the act of laying or just freshly off the nest. But anyway, that's what's going on today. Um, like I said earlier, both my uh, my Jen right here, actually that's my granddaughter's chicken. She's our little Americana. She's laying a blue egg as well as the other bearded lady, Esther the Queen. They're both, my bearded ladies are laying blue eggs. And, oh, I know one more thing I want to talk about. i got a big announcement to make. And this is really big. And I've already told the girls, so it's not like they don't know, but they're not happy about it, that I'm expecting triplets. <laughs> and the due date is May the 10th. I'm so excited. Three more baby chicks are going to be joining our little family of seven. So we'll have a total of ten. And um, so far we are looking at, um, my grandson is going to come and help me with the this batch the first week. He's ten years, no, he's twelve. And he's really looking forward to it. There's my beautiful Bula. The layer of the speckled eggs right there. She's so pretty. Um... He has, I let him pick a chicken, and he's going to pick a name, and he doesn't want to name her until he sees her, but she's go, he picked a Swedish flower hen, and, oh, what, what's going on right here? Look at these two. That's Bula, my Barnavelder, and Esther. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Moving. <laughs> I didn't know what the world was about to happen there. Oh boy. But anyway, um, <laughs> Hester's hitting the road. But um, the other two that I'm ordering is a, um, <laughs> a salmon faverole, which I'm really excited about her. Uh, the Swedish flower hen that my grandson picked out. And Honestly, right now, I'm, I'm sorry to say, I cannot think of what the other one is. But um, the other one that I want, I wanted four. I wanted an olive egger, but they're all out. But um, I order from Meyer Hatchery, and being in 
Ohio, they're close enough that I can drive there and pick my baby chicks up rather than having them delivered through the mail, which I really, really like that. So on hatch day, um, if they have an olive egger, don't be surprised if I come home with baby number four with quadruplets rather than triplets. So, but anyway, that's um, my big news. New babies on the way. Sure wish I could remember what that other one was. Um, it was a Moran that I wanted, but then uh, maybe it's the Moran. No. Oh, I remember. This is a um, silver gray dorking. So it's a silver gray dorking, a Swedish flower hen, and a salmon faverol. That's the three. And if an olive egger happens to be available on hatch day, I'm going to take one of those home as well. So... All right, everybody, that's it. That's the update from Yikes, I'm a Chicken Mom. I'm about to go out in the run and give the girls um, some tomatoes, some one of their favorites. We've been giving them cabbages and things like that to try to keep them occupied. So that's it, and I'm going to sign off, um, and I will be talking to you soon.